Hey everyone, it's Ben Hardy here, and in today's video I'm talking about how I just purchased a 2021 Gen 3 Raptor and I'm getting a check cut back to me for $30,000. No, this isn't fake. No, this isn't because I got some crazy sponsorship with Ford. This is because I did some very smart things and I'm gonna explain all of that in today's video. It's something that you could potentially realistically do as a regular consumer if you you know, do the right things at the right time, which you guys will understand once I explain everything in today's video. But we're gonna try something a little bit different than I used to in the channel. When I used to talk about topics like this, I would basically just drive around and I'm super busy today and I don't have time to just sit here in the driveway for like, you know, 10, 15 minutes to explain everything. So we're actually gonna pop in the Santa Cruz because I'm taking it off-road today and on my way to the off-roading location, I'll just talk about it. Hopefully my GoPro works because I have a GoPro set in the windshield and it's one of the uh, GoPros that I, I just got to show this to you guys that has uh, definitely had a very, very interesting life. So you guys can kind of see here that it's, uh, it's very dirty. There's sand. So the whole lens, there's it's completely sanded out. And uh, if you guys are wondering, the GoPro is barely being held together. This GoPro flew off of a car at 50 miles an hour um, entering the highway and completely blew apart and then I put it back together and then it also flew off a truck off-road going like 60 miles an hour and it also flew off the TRX going like 40 miles an hour off-road so like that GoPro has uh, definitely definitely lived a life and so hopefully the audio works on it if it doesn't I guess I'll just have to refilm this video but um hopefully you guys see me in the Santa Cruz cross my fingers so again hopefully the audio works and sadly you guys can't see this because of where the cameras face but there's a beautiful bentley bentega that is just about to pass me with the ski box on it so <laughs> they actually use it for suv stuff yeah that thing looks so good wow oh and it's brand new yeah, it looks like they just bought it and they're probably gonna cut in front of me oh no never mind i thought they were going to um but anyways let's actually talk about the whole situation so this started months and months ago when I purchased the Ford Focus RS. So you guys remember, I got the Ford Focus RS because I needed a small, compact, daily driver, something that was the complete opposite of the Ram TRX. And the reason that I needed to get something that was the complete opposite of the Ram TRX is because that truck gets way too much attention and it didn't fit in parking spaces, didn't fit in parking garages, and there's just all sorts of things. And so I'm like, okay, I need something that I can actually just, you know, just go to places and nobody's gonna pay attention to me so I can film my car reviews. And the Focus RS did a great job of doing that. Even though I wrapped it bright purple, it still didn't get like any attention. Well, fast forward literally like a couple weeks after I bought the car, the automakers started saying, hey, we really like your stuff, Ben Hardy. We're gonna send you more cars, which this is a great first world problem to have. So I went from getting like one press car a month to getting like two a week. So then the whole thing of having the Focus RS completely didn't make sense. So I turned it into a paperweight and that was the whole joke. Like I literally parked it in the driveway and just didn't drive it for like three months straight. And the reason that I did that is I knew that the value on that car was going to go up. And I knew that, well, okay, this is gonna suck to have, you know, cause I paid about $35,000 for it. This is gonna suck to have about $35,000 put into this car that I'm not driving at all. But you know what, it's gonna go up in value so at least I'm gonna be able to make a little bit of money and it's gonna be worth it. And that 100% came true because just about a month ago, we posted the Focus RS for sale. It sold after two weeks and I made a profit of about six, $7,000 uh, roughly after everything was said and done. And so that was, you know, just a big plus for me. And so that's the first part as to why I'm getting this money cut back to me because I happened to sell the car through the Ford dealership. And instead of having them give me my money, which, you know, the $40,000 or so that it roughly was, I said, hey, can you hold the 40 grand for me and wait until the Bronco and the Raptor come in and I'll decide which vehicle I want that money to go towards because I had always planned for the money that the Focus RS had into it to go towards another car, which by the way, the Focus was paid off. So they just had $40,000. So, had that money sitting with the Ford dealership, and then the Bronco comes in. And I, if you guys noticed, I posted a ton of Bronco content. I went to the off-rodeo in Texas, thank you Bill Stein for sponsoring me and sending me out there, and had an absolute blast. I filmed a review on pretty much every single possible Bronco package that I could manage. And the reason I did this was I was gauging you guys. I was testing you guys as an audience. How interested are you in seeing Bronco content from Ben Hardy? And you know what you guys said to me? You said initially the Bronco content, we love it. And then it died off very fast. And so then what that told me as a YouTuber is if I purchase a Bronco and put money into it and do content with it, I am not gonna get a return. 
So what am I gonna do with it instead? I'm going to sell it. And that's what I did with my Bronco order and that's why you guys haven't seen any content on it other than you know, the delivery video and the comparison and there's another review coming on it is because I sold it within literally a week of me purchasing it. And if you guys are wondering, I sold it for a profit of about $15,000. And some of that money did go towards the Ford store because we pre-negotiated an amount of money that they would get if um, I sold the Bronco for a certain amount of money. So I could have made well over the $15,000 that I made on the Bronco. But there was a couple things that went through my mind and this is a, kind of a sharp turn. So my Gatorade's in the back are going all over the place. I didn't want to wait, right? If I would have waited, you know, two months or so, I could have made probably a little bit more money, but there's a reason why I didn't want to wait. First off, I had a buyer that is a friend of mine now, and so I knew that the Bronco is going to go to a good home, someone that's actually going to use it for what it's meant for, and so that kind of like made me excited about where it's going. And then on top of that, right, the fact that it's like, okay, I have a buyer here and now, and I have a guaranteed amount of money, let's just take advantage of it. I'm still making money, right? I literally made $15,000 for ordering a car. Like, when does that ever happen, right? That's just stupid. And so the fact that I made any money off the order, I think is just awesome. And so I'm like, okay, I'm just gonna take this and run. And funny enough, it's very good that I took it and run because Bronco values have softened a massive amount. So Ford delivered a bunch of these Broncos and people are now getting the deliveries. And what's happened is there's a bunch of people that have Broncos on order and people are okay with waiting. A lot of you that have these Broncos on order, you're like, you know what, if I have to wait two years, three years, that's okay. I'll eventually get it. That's fine. I'll just save up money for it. I'm cool with that. And then the people that are getting Broncos like me are going, oh, wow, cars are selling for over MSRP. Let me take advantage of this and sell this. So literally everyone that's taking delivery of their Bronco is just going and selling it. And so the market has become kind of oversaturated, so the values have tanked a lot. You guys will see Broncos online for sale for, you know, 100 grand, 150 grand. They're not selling for that much. The average transaction price for a Bronco right now is between five to $20,000 over sticker, depending on the market and depending on the package. So I didn't make as much as I could have made, but pretty dang close, right? And again, still making any money off of a car, ordering it, like I still think that's crazy. So that's what happened with the Bronco is I went and sold it. So you guys, if you're, you know, tallying everything up, I got $15,000 from the Bronco and I have another, you know, seven, six, seven thousand $7,000 from the Focus roughly. So I've got just over $20,000 in profit that I've made from these two vehicles. And then on top of that, Utah has an awesome thing where if you've already paid taxes on one vehicle and you trade it in on another, you don't pay taxes on the new vehicle you only pay taxes on the difference number well i can just tell you right now that the new raptor that i purchased is worth a lot less than a bronco first edition plus a ford focus rs those two together amounted to just under one hundred twenty thousand dollars, which i did not pay anywhere near one hundred twenty thousand dollars for the raptor so my taxes for the raptor were completely zeroed out which if I would have had to pay taxes on the Raptor, it would have been about $6,000. So I saved myself another $6,000 right there because of the tax credit, which yes, I did pay the taxes on the Focus and the Bronco. So it's not really like I'm saving money, but at the same time, I made money on both of those cars. And then since I did that whole ordeal through the ordeal, did the whole deal through the Ford dealership, I was able to put them as trade-ins towards the Raptor, which then gave me the tax credit which then, you know, technically puts me another $6,000 ahead. So right there, I have saved my, I have made over $20,000, saved myself $6,000. So right now I'm like $30,000 in the positive on this deal, which is a massive amount of money. And so obviously all of that money goes towards the Raptor. And because of the fact that I paid cash for the Bronco and paid cash for the Folk, well, I took a loan on the Focus initially, but then I paid it off. So the Focus was completely owned outright. So since those vehicles are both owned outright, and they were worth more than the Raptor, that's why I'm getting that $30,000 check cut back to me is because I basically had a 117, you know, it was almost $120,000 credit at the Ford store and I bought a vehicle that was worth a lot less than that. So again, that's why I'm getting the money back. But here's where things get pretty interesting and why the Raptor is basically for free. So again, I made that money off of both those cars. So right, right there, and my Raptor is secret for about $82,000, if you guys are wondering. Right there, I can cut $20,000 off the uh, price of the Raptor because I made $20,000 off those vehicles. So it's as if I'm buying the Raptor for $60-something thousand dollars. 
I'm a business owner and this Raptor is a business expense 100%. That is the only reason why I'm purchasing this Raptor. Yes, I'm gonna enjoy it. Yes, I'm gonna have fun with it. But guess what? It is a business expense. And since it is a 100% for business use and it's a truck with a gross vehicle weight rating of over 6,000 pounds, that means that I will be able to depreciate the entire vehicle and write off the entire truck. And since I'll be able to write off the entire truck, you know, over the you know, amount of time that I'm able to do that, right? I leave that to my tax guy. I don't worry about that. He takes care of that. That means that I am saving myself what I paid for the Raptor, which I can't exactly say the exact amount because, well, the Ford store would get mad at me, so I'm not gonna say that, but I got a good deal for uh, considering the market and everything. And so that amount that, we'll just say, we'll just say sticker price, right? The Raptor sticker's for 80 something thousand dollars. Um, so I get to basically write off $80,000 off of my income over the depreciation of owning that Raptor, which, right, it's not like I'm saving $80,000, right? You just have to deduct how much you would pay taxes on the $80,000, which let's just say would be about, you know, since I'm in Utah, let's say about 40%, right? So that's like another <laughs> $30,000. And so right here, between the tax credit, between the tax write-off, and between the money I made in those vehicles, I'm basically getting this Raptor, you know, my actual out-of-pocket cost on this Raptor will end up being like, you know, $20,000. It'll be a little bit less than that, but about $20,000 roughly. And on top of that, the resale value of the Raptors is absolutely astronomical. And this new Gen 3 is doing a really good job so far. They're all going for over MSRP. The package I got, if you guys are wondering, the average transaction price right now is twenty dollars to $30,000 over sticker. So I could go and sell this truck for a profit. I'm not going to, I'm gonna do content on it. But that means that when I go and sell this truck, I'll probably make money. So then I'll basically have bought this Raptor with money that I made in other cars and tax write-off and tax credit and all that fun stuff. And then when I go to sell it, I'll probably make a little bit of money. And so I will literally get to drive a brand new Gen 3 Raptor completely for free, which is something that you could also do to an extent, right? The tax write-off thing, if you're not a business owner and you're not using it for business use, that's gonna be a little bit more difficult. But if you order the right cars or if you purchase the right cars at the right time, especially with how crazy the market's been and you get a good deal on something, you can go and flip cars for a profit and then that means that you could do literally what I did where you can buy cars, have fun with them, sell them, make a little bit of money. And it's not like you'll ever be able to live off of this. Like I, I'm not living off of that money. I'm living off of the YouTube money, but it's allowing me to do YouTube stuff, right? It's allowing me to build my business for free rather than having to spend, you know, literally hundreds of thousands of dollars and to run this business, I'm doing it for free, which I think is just absolutely crazy. But yeah, that's everything that uh, went down. Hopefully that kind of properly explains it. I know there's probably still gonna be some questions. So I guess if you wanna guys wanna clarify anything in the comment section down below, I'll try to answer them as uh, best as I can manage. But yeah, it's it's just how I do business nowadays with the YouTube channel is uh, basically I try to buy these vehicles at the right time for the right amount of money so that I don't spend any money on them. So then any money that I make from the YouTube channel can then obviously go towards uh, the Ben Hardy retirement fund, <laughs> which is uh, very important for me because I don't know how long this YouTube stuff's gonna last for. Um, but also, then it can go towards other fun projects and all that other stuff so that I can reinvest it into the business rather than just hemorrhaging money just to keep the business going, right? Trying to be smart about all this, it's pretty crazy. There's a lot that goes into it. But yeah, I don't want this video to be terribly long, so that's gonna sum things up. Hopefully the GoPro captured this. If the microphone on this GoPro is broken, I'm gonna be so upset because I'll have to refilm this and my voice is already like slightly strained so it'll make me sad. But I'll see you guys.